All right, then with your uh, patience, I guess we'll get started here. Yeah, sure. Um, is this the first uh, mini concert of this sort you've ever done? Well, <clears throat> no, actually it's not. I've done a similar thing in, um, in, in, in Germany. Oh, really? Yeah. What kind of a setup was that? The same sort of PR? Well, no, it was a bit more like, it was the same kind of thing, but it was uh, sort of more like, about 8,000 people. Mm, mm, mm. So it was a big, like a big, big venue. Mm, mm. Did two of them. Too. Did you hear the how rough the competition was to get to get a ticket to this thing? It was like eight, eight, 1,800 seats out of 50,000 applicants. Yeah, I know. I, was, yeah. I couldn't believe it. Well, the thing would have, I, it didn't really amaze me. Right? Yeah. It's pretty much par for the course, but I, there are a lot of young girls. Mm. Like, High school, yeah. junior high school. Is that the same story uh, as back in uh, Germany or the other? No, no, no. It's not actually. It's um, mm. I usually have a 50-50 audience mm -hmm. um, in Britain and Germany. <coughs> Do you know how it is? It is, don't you? Well, I mean, I'm in Germany and and, uh, and America. There's always a mixed audience, which um, I, I suppose maybe it's that. Um, the people who've got tickets for this are the, like the keenest. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose they are. Uh, they were rather lucky today. How come you did those two songs with um, your, your lip sync? Yeah. Why is that? I mean, you could have done it alone. Could you? Well, n no. To to actually do my 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 proper concert, I need everything um, that goes with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it's it's a very. It's not something. I mean, at the start, I need all my own equipment. And that's all hired stuff because it's got all my programs in it, <laughs> things like that. <laughs> and um, I need my mixer, sound engineer, I, all the paraphernalia that goes with it. <clears throat> so I, I, I uh, you know, it, it's, it needs quite a bit of preparation. To do it's not as simple as you make it look. Well, <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. Well, I, I don't know if I make it look easy. But <laughs> what about today, uh, the thing today? What did you think of that? What do you think? What do you think of the whole layout and the whole the questions from the audience? Um, I think I think it's really interesting. I like doing things that are different, and I like I like answering the questions actually. Hmm. Um, some of them were very interesting. Now it's great great to do things that are different. I've never done that before. Hmm. It's a challenge. Hmm. You're kind of treating you like a pop idol. Is that does that bother you, or do you welcome it, or? No, I, I'm just I'm just um, pleased to be to be liked really by anyone. Mm. To, to, be, to be honest, I spent so long trying to get somewhere um, and not you know not getting anywhere. But when you actually do have people that like what you do, you're very grateful. I mean, <coughs> um, yes, that's it. Really. Mm. You weren't offended by any of the questions. Then. Oh no, no, <laughs> no. That was all. You would you wouldn't expect anything a little more of a higher level though. Well, I mean, there was one, there was, there was um, the question about religion, which mm -hmm. I think was good. Mm -hmm. um, there was another one, I can't remember what that was. You know, what, what, you know, what do I think of Japan and things like that? Yeah, I, you know, I mean, those are the kind of things people want to know. Mm -hmm. And it's often, it's a, a question can appear um, not very grand, mm -hmm. but it's the way you answer it. Mm -hmm. Let's say that the situation were reversed, and you would ask the fans questions. You, what would you ask them? Um. <clears throat> I'd, I'd ask them if they if they had any idea what the words were hmm. the songs the songs were about. Hmm. It's one of the questions. Hmm. Whether they, you know, like could translate them into Japanese and, hmm. and how they. I mean, what, what, what the meaning of them would be once they're translated, mm -hmm. how they have it, does it have any relevance to, to Japanese people, mm -hmm. what I'm singing about. You get that mm -hmm. kind of feedback from people back in English-speaking countries, are they, are they very turned on by the words? Yes, yes, it's a very common, uh, common thing that you get, I get a lot of letters. 80% of the letters talk about the words. Is that right? Yeah. Like what kind of things do they say? Just for well, they say, they say um, things like new song they found very encouraging because they found it, it gave them a lot of uh, hope sort of thing, to, mm. to have a go at something new. <coughs> um, people talk about hide and seek and 
to say that it's, it, it, it really uh, it really affected them sort of deep, quite deeply. Uh, you know, trying to work out what what was that, what is actually being said in the song um, and the quality, you know, the sentiments expressed mm -hmm. expressed in that. So it, you know, like I see, I I always talk about the lyrics in, in all my interviews and things mm -hmm. like that. So I always place a lot of importance on it myself. Okay. So 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 I direct. I hope to direct people's attention to them. It's like the lyrics aren't necessarily the thing that people get much into these days, but I'm trying to re redirect people's attention back to it. What do you hope to say to your lyrics generally? I mean, it looks like you talk about life in general, yeah. being positive. What is what is love strikes me as very as very pessimistic. <clears throat> no, no, I, I don't. I don't think it is at all. It, 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 on the surface, it sounds cynical, but it isn't. It, it's a it's a question. It's a, it's a questioning. Thing. Anything, any question process is good and positive, I think. But, but also, like, it's like so many people have been trashed by the romantic idea of love, mm. and so questioning it and saying, you know, what, you know, what is this to me? Is, is, a, is, is, is a positive thing, I, you know? And then, really, making people, uh, well, mm. throwing down the gauntlet to people to actually really work out what, what love is and what love really should be and not what it's you know this crazy romantic idea which you know wastes so many people how do you see yourself you say you want to question it but how do you how do you see this as it yourself is it a romantic enigma or is it myself yeah no, well i mean my, you know i mean i mean if i was to talk about what i think is real now it's it's um, when you let when you let the people that you love, be free to do what they want. You don't bind them, you don't tie them down. I mean, it's a very, it's an ideal. I know it's very idealistic, that, but it, it is, it is an, it's an, it's an, you've got to have ideals and aims mm -hmm. to aim for. Whether you can live up to them or not, is, is it irrelevant? Mm -hmm. But you just aim for it and you try for it a bit. Mm -hmm. Which do you think is more important, commitment or passion? Um, I, I, I don't know if you can separate them really. Mm. I think they're very very akin because um, I I, no, I, don't, I don't know. Well, how about you, what's your own policy? Really? Oh, passion. I, oh, I see. I mean, it depends how you mean passion. I think of passion as putting everything you've got into something. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. whatever you do, if you're a football player, or something, like that, you're yeah. it's life or death. For you. It's, You've got to do it, you know, you've got to, and you've got to give it everything. So commitment, so pretty. But especially when you're married, I think after a while things sort of cool down. At least the passion cools, and oh, it's yeah. more of a matter of like commitment and honesty, devotion. Yeah, yeah. It, it, yes, it becomes more pra it becomes more real and practical. It's just that, I, I, I in, 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 in a way, what what is love is doing is trying to cut the honeymoon period down. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. Because it and, li and like even well, they cut it out altogether in a way because it's uh, so misleading. <laughs> so misleading. How, how how long did you know your wife before you actually married her? About three years. Ago. Is that right? Yeah, we lived together for two years. So after after knowing her for a year, you moved in together, and that was you basically yeah. put yourself out of circulation as an eligible bachelor. Well, I suppose so. Although I was never the type to have lots of girlfriends anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How old were you when that happened? Uh, um, probably about tw 21. Is that right? I guess, what, you're 25? 29. Oh, 29 now. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. You said it took you a long time to score the success here. What was keeping, keeping you? <clears throat> Why did it evade you for so long? Well, you know, it's fate. How's that? It wasn't. It wasn't a big change in your own uh, musical style. No, no it, it wasn't a big change. What? Because it's, it's. No, it wasn't something that I suddenly changed, and it worked. It, it was a building up to it, and it and it seemed to cross a, cross a threshold, and then suddenly everything happened for me. But but up until that point, nothing was happening. Mm. But it, I but I kept working at it, and in fact things were getting better and better. All the time, the songs were getting better. 
live performances were getting better and it's um, just built up. Do you think this Howard uh, Howard Jones fever owes solely to the songs or is there something else there? Well, I'll tell you, I think it's um, people have tried very hard to explain why I'm successful because and they, they, and they always end up not knowing why. My, my thing is, my theory is that it's the intention behind it. I think people don't, aren't, uh, as, um, uh, they don't go for super, superficial things as, as much as one would think. They do actually look deeper into, into, into a person. They pick up things from certain things, from interviews, and from just a vibe on the record, and on the records, they, they feel whether, you, whether you're sincere or whether you're just a poser or what. And I think that comes out, you know, I, I sincerely hope that that, that that comes across. As we say in America, it's a, a, a matter of being real. Yeah. Well, what, what's real and what's unreal then? What's not real? Well, well, it, it's 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 like if you're see my when I'm on stage when I when I when I'm recording when I'm doing all the things that I do in the and stuff that is just the same as when I'm not it is me it is actually me so I think if there's a, 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 a big divide between the public view and the private view then you probably end up going a bit on the I think and I think. Uh, people pick up on that, and they feel they feel your own sort of, uh, like schizophrenia, mm. and, and it's uncomfortable. I think you know people do pick these things up intuitively. Have you ever seen that in other artists, like people you admired in the past, or what you even admire now? No, I, I honestly can't. Um, I suspect it with a, a lot, a lot of people, but I don't know for sure because you can't. I heard that you're a big Peter Gabriel devotee. Is that true? Well, <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that. I mean, I just I like what he does, but I'm not sort of like a big devotee of anyone. Is that right? Fan of anyone, no. Really? Yeah. There's, well, there's people I like and people I admire, but I just I don't think you should worship. Be, no, I don't think you should worship anyone. <laughs> but you're being worshipped, though. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, <laughs> I'm trying to live up to the responsibility of that. You know what I mean? Is the responsibility big? Yeah. Or do you I think, think so. you just kind of sit back and? No, I take it very seriously. I mean, I don't worry or sweat at no, night, but I'm, I'm very keen that if people are going to put me on a, on a pedestal, that I'm going to give them something worthwhile to offer. The best thing that I can think of to offer them, I'm going to offer. Mm. So you, I think of it as being responsible. Yeah. Have you ever disappointed yourself since becoming this big? Um, no, I haven't. I haven't made any major blunders. I, I, I've tried to. I've always tried never to sort of strike back in anger. Hmm. That's that's the key to it, I think. Oh. Are you an impulsively an angry person? No. Um, uh, well, I mean, I wouldn't say in general that I'm, I'm angry because I do get angry. Oh. I definitely do get angry, especially when people, you know, you you get a lot of people trying to uh, cut you down into mm -hmm. being in my position, and sometimes you have to you have to like bite your tongue when you're being interviewed by it and like because as soon as you start getting angry you know, sort of say something you're going to regret later on and that's what they want right? huh. I, um, I find that it's, I've learned how to how to keep that in control but in the British press I know they stab you you know behind your back but do they actually try and get you mad during the interview itself I don't think I don't think a lot of journalists try and actually see you, want to see you stamping and stealing, but they want to slightly off balance you so that mm -hmm. you'll say something that is def on the defensive because that makes good copy and it's doing good journalism. They're often about that. Hmm. How about response back home? Is it sort of positive or negative impression? I, I'd say, I mean, I'm not liked by the hit press at all. Which I'm very, very glad about. <laughs> so I never wanted because I see that as being a kiss of death. Really, because hmm. if you're liked by the hit press, then you won't be liked tomorrow. 
Uh, and they, they don't like me because they, they ne never had anything to do with my music <laughs> and, they, and they don't like me because they can't explain why I am successful. So it's, it's funny because, you know, the, the bands like Culture Club, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, uh, Duran Duran came, were, were originally, you know, critics' uh, darlings yeah. in the beginning. Yes, well, I wasn't. Never were. I never was. So I actually never was. I... I never was a critic starling, no. no. I actually did it without him completely. <laughs> <laughs> How were you able to bypass that? Just by going, by going straight to the people who are, you know, people who buy the records, just influencing them. Hmm. You know, just going on your music, going setting yourself on your music and what you do, and not by somebody writing good things about you. Hmm. Have you always done just pian electric piano and uh, just uh, regular piano stuff on stage, or have you been doing the synthesizer uh, stuff for a long time now? I've been doing the synth stuff for about five years, I suppose. How did that start about? I'm sure you've been asked it about 10,000 um, times still. Well, just, uh, let's see, um, well, I, you know, I've been a keyboard player all my life since they got keyboards, so you naturally attracted to them. Um, and the price of them came down about five years ago, I think it was four mm. months, so mm. we got one. They sent me another one by mistake. So I just started, I've got an idea, I'll get, put this together as a one man show. I didn't know if it was possible, but gradually got bits of equipment, mainly Japanese equipment. Mm. Mm. And um, it started to work, you know, mm. and I le learned how to perform. And just, I just built, I actually really did it from scratch, you know, from total from scratch. Just to go to pubs and play on tables with cardboard boxes and my suits on top of that. And just build up a following one, one by one. Gradually got to a local following there. We used to go up to London and take coaches up to London. It's very, you know, like, because it, it, I, I think, see, it was built, always built on like a really solid foundation. It was built on a grassroots following. It wasn't built on a, a press campaign, um, and yet when I so when I had my first record out, um, there was I had a, you know a big following in the country. You know, there no one nationally, or press wise, has heard of me. You know, so and that would that was getting it back up <laughs> because they had, you know, had they never picked up on you in the early days. Where are you from in England? Where am I from? Uh, well, I live in High Wycombe, which is between London and Oxford. Is that where you were? Where you grew up as well? Well, no, because I was always moving around with my parents. Why is that? Well, just my father just always was changing jobs. He just wasn't, he was never very settled in his hmm. So you're just moving all over England, or was it Europe? No, just England. We went to Canada as well. Was oh, that right? Mm -hmm. Lived in Canada, in Ottawa, for three years. Do you think always being on the move like that and exposed to different people and places has helped your music? I don't know if it's at my music, it's at my me as a person. So you learn to sort of cope with insecurity and uh, having to get on with new people very quickly and you know, have to learn fast. Why did you start up with the keyboards originally? Why not a different instrument? Uh, my parents wanted me to learn piano. So yeah, I took to it very easily. So I was very keen. And I was in what age? Seven. The age of seven? Oh my god. 22 years of your life then you can oh, yeah. keyboard play. Yes, that's right. Huh. You think you could ever be anything other than a musician? Could I be anything other than a yeah. musician? Yeah, other than a musician. Yeah, I could. I, I, I could, yeah. But I, I don't want to. Oh, really? Nothing. So you, you don't want to be anything other than a musician? No, I don't. No, this suits me fine. Huh. What about the world of pop, though? I mean, people don't stay around forever. You gotta move out, move on to other things. Or is that something you think is wrong? <coughs> you think you can break that? Uh, well, I don't know. I I'm get, I want to give this like a good five or six years hmm. from now, and then after that, have a rest. But I want to like flog myself during those five or six years, really, you know, seven days a week. Or what I've been doing for the last two years. <laughs> and, uh, 
and then have, and then have a rest because I think that you, you should be you sh I should be able to say everything I want to say in that time and have done all the things I wanted to do and then let somebody else have a go. You know. Well, what's your major goal as a musician? To play in front of as many people as possible? Or no, it's, it's not really as it is. It's, you know, I, I, I want to communicate something that will live in people's memories till they're old. Hmm. That's really what I want to do. That's what I aim to do. Immortality. No, 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 not immortality. Because I don't want to live beyond them, beyond my, my contemporaries. Hmm. I'm not bothered about that at all. Hmm. But I would like to, to have been useful to people that are hearing my music now. Mm. I'd, like, I'd like it to be useful in some way. That it's like you've got a stack of records at home and you think, oh, God, I, you know, you feel a certain thing at this time and you think, oh, I, I'll put on hide and seek because I, I know that that calms me down. Mm. I'd, that's what I'd like. Mm. What calms you down? Instead of curiosity. <laughs> What's been what calms me down? Hmm? Well, watching TV, I think that's what calms me down. Seriously? Yeah. British Just TV. sort of blanking out a bit on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how you spend your time at home usually? When you're I don't have any time at home to be honest. I hardly, I'm hardly at home at all. Huh. If I'm at home, it's just for a few hours of sleeping. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I, you know, I'm extremely, extremely busy all the time. Have you always been, I like. Have yeah. you always been that way, a hyperactive person? Um, well, yeah, I suppose I have, really. But, I, yeah, I suppose I, people... I, ne I never think of myself as being hyperactive, but other people say that I am. Now that you've scored this kind of success, are people beating your doors down asking you to do co-projects with you? No. No. No, no. No, I've been asked to write, to write some people's some songs. Hmm, like who? Well, I met Nona Hendricks the other day, she wanted me to come for it. Um, Bonnie Tyler, <laughs> I didn't need to do it for him. Uh, those are the people I've met. I mean, I, I should think... I haven't heard of anyone else who... No, I, I haven't had that. Hmm. Co-projects, no. Is that right? Because I haven't been around very long. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Is there anybody who you want to work with? No. Really? Yeah. Nobody at all? No, I mean, I, not that I've got anything against anyone else, but <laughs> I just want to do it myself, really. Hmm. No, I, don't I just know. really love doing it on my own. Just, is that always going to be the way it is for the next five or six years? Yeah, I'll I, I, I sort of work with other people in terms of like, I use other musicians on stage for the next tour. Oh really? What kind of musicians? <coughs> well, just, you know, just you know, bass player, drummer, and you know, the keyboard player, I suppose. Hmm. But that's just to keep the audience's interest up. Because I've done this one man thing, and my own interest in this work. Because I've done this one thing, and I think I've made it work. I I I, I want to uh, you know, try some else out, get get into some more hot water. <laughs> uh, just about I guess less than a week ago, I talked to Thomas Dolby. Oh, you're yeah. often uh, you're often uh, compared with, and he was saying about the first record, he had everything in his mind, every song mapped out, mm -hmm. where what has to go, and you know who to use. And he just went to the studio and you know got it done with. Then for the second album, he just has that now the flat earth. He went, went to the studio with some other musicians and had them work on grooves. Mm -hmm. And then he started working on melodies and putting it together in a band yeah. uh, uh, type setting. Mm -hmm. You would never think of doing anything like that. No. Mm -hmm. How do no, you I come? Don't, up? I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to do that. No. How do you come up with the song? Is it like <coughs> his first album where everything's in your in your mind? Um, <coughs> yes. Yeah, so, well, what I what I. Is that, I mean, I, 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 I don't want to be in the position where I, I don't, I haven't got all the songs written and worked out before I go in. I like to have it all worked out because things change so much in the studio anyway. You've got, I find it's great to have to know basically what the song's about, and then before I go in, and I, I that's just that's the way I like to work myself. When do you do your best songwriting? What kind of places? What kind of times? Is it Mick, the mixed bag? It's when I've just, it's when I've been away for a long time and I haven't had a chance to play or anything. When I come back and I'm just desperate to just <laughs> write and play and that's when the best stuff comes, you know, huh. comes out. Why would you not do anything, just being on vacation somewhere? No, because on tour you just don't get the opportunity to write. I don't know. You, you, you 
and that, you know, like you do sound checks and gigs, and that's it, and then the rest of the time you're traveling. Hmm. And you don't, you can't, you know, I can't have a keyboard set up on the bus. <laughs> and travel on. Hmm. What actually happened in Toronto? I heard several people passed out. 25 people. Was it actually 25? That's an active figure? Oh, absolutely. Totally. Agree. How did that happen? I understand. Well, I got pretty excited. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of a place was it, though? World War It was. It was, it was, it was, the, it was the concert hall. It was the concert hall, do you know? A large concert hall? No, it was the, the concert, concert hall. hall. It was about 18 numbers uh -huh. capacity. And it just was like, I've never experienced an audience like it. There was just so over the top enthusiastic that it's mad. I mean they 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 were singing all the songs all the way through and just going mad. It was great. Is that right? Best audience ever. And I've had some great, you know, really good ones. But they just topped the lot. Aren't you worried about something serious happening though? Yeah we were. We were very worried about it. It was the promoter and uh, laid on medical staff. Mm -hmm. So, all, all our backstage crew was, you know, giving people a kiss of life and all that kind of stuff at the back, bringing them all around and being nurses and doctors. How about you? Did you need an ox oxygen tank? No, no, I, I was all right. How about, is, what's the name of the other fellow, Jed? Jed, yes. Um, the latest video, I guess, uh, what's it called? Pearl? Pearl in the Shell. Pearl in the Shell. Yeah. He seems to be the, the, the featured uh, character in that video. Why is that? Yeah. Why not you? Well, because, 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 see, the primary thing for me with videos is to get the point over. Mm -hmm. It's not to promote me as a, as a, as a subject. The idea is to get the point over. Mm. And that character, I thought of that character and that idea, and um, Jed was the perfect person to do it. I mean, mm. he's a very good actor, mm. much better actor than I am, so he's the best person to do it. You kind of uh, work up sympathy for him because you know you see the, the the glow in his eyes when he looks at the poster that says you know appearing tonight you know Jed <laughs> is it actually a dream of him a dream of his to go off on his own or is he satisfied being yourself? No, I think he's very satisfied with being with working with me, um, but uh, he 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 identifies with that character very very strongly mm. as, a, as, a, as himself. It's very you know he, he's known those, all those feelings. Do you think you could, you could do this show pretty well without him though now? It's, yeah, he must be a pretty big part of it. I could, oh, I, 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 I definitely that. could, and I'm sure that Jed would agree with me that mm. he could. Because, mm. I mean, he comes on, he comes on for uh, only four numbers. Oh, is that right? In an hour and a half set. Uh -huh. Sometimes two hours, so I, I definitely could do it on one. But, um, I mean, it's, it's great having him. He adds a lot to it, so, you know, I'm pretty do you work things out, or is it all spontaneous? There's a lot of it is um, is, is spontaneous. Actually, every night's different. Um, although there, obviously there's, there's a structure because when you do kind of, especially the parts of where we interact, you've got to have something worked down. But mm. it's very different every night. That's what keeps it exciting for us and mm. fun for us. Where do you most want to visit next? I mean, I, I realize you probably have a schedule all set up, but is um, there any place else you'd like to cover? Uh, no, I, I think I've done it. I've been everywhere, but I, I just want to go everywhere again uh, on the next phase of things. So I just like what I've been doing for the last year is doing the ground work. Sort of thing. I'd like hmm. to go back and do it on a grand level. How could you do it better? Well, it's just like doing bigger venues. Um, Really, and uh, upgrading the production. Do you think you're in longer sets? And hmm. Do you think your music suits a larger venue, or do you do better in smaller ones? <coughs> um, I definitely, uh, I like both, but uh, it works better in larger places. It, it always, it always has. You know, everyone always thought that I'd never be able to take what I did out of the small places, but. Not the case of right? you know, bigger the bigger the venue, it seems to be the better. Hmm. Yeah. So I mean, I did do a festival in Germany, fifty thousand people. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, that was. Uh, no, that was. 
Yeah. <laughs> it worked really well. Yeah. 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 Um, is that like a stadium type place? Yeah, it was a football ground. Yeah. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. But has the best one been Toronto so far? <laughs> really? So I, I would imagine you're itching to get back there then. Yeah, I'm going back there with you. You said you actually lived in it with what? With, uh, we're touring with Eurythmics. Oh, is that right? Uh, yeah. Next six weeks. Yeah. Uh huh. After yeah. Japan. You opening that? Yeah. Huh. You said you lived in Canada though. Was it? It wasn't but near Toronto. Was no, it? it was Ottawa. So. Oh, so it wasn't exactly a homecoming. No. It wasn't. Oh, I, did, I did play in Ottawa. But um, you know. Uh huh. Toronto is such a good sort of hip zone, like a European city, Toronto. Mm. Mm. Is that right? It's okay. vibrant, you know. Mm. It's a good place, a lot of energy flowing around there. Mm. Mm. I see. Okay, I think we're going to have to get some pictures here then. Okay. With your cooperation. Or covers. The cover the magazine. Okay. Hit them. And see. I want you to play hide and seek. これはハイデンシックポーズ。これ大量ってのはね。それはあのケースバッグ。こんにちは。
just a distant えー、日本にね、え、来ることが um, yeah, sure. Um, well, <laughs> just want to say thanks, thanks to everyone for coming, coming here today, and thanks for taking so much interest in, in me and my music, and um, thanks to everyone in Japan for giving me such a very warm and, uh, and kind-hearted reception, and, and thanks for the presents as well. Thank you. え、本当にえ、皆様にえ、お礼を言いたいことがたくさんありまして、え、この会場の中に来ている人たちに、え、ハワード・ジョーンズに質問コーナーっていうコーナーを開きます。で、こちらに、え、両側に間に、え、ワーナーの、え、宣伝ボイさんがいまして、蝶ネクタイをしている方、も
、えー、彼はとてもそういう宗教のことについては、えー、深く考えていることがあって、えー、東の方のそういう宗教もいろんなことを勉強したりしてるんですけどもでも自分はそういうことを勉強とか重ねてあれしてもやっぱり自分は自分なりの宗教というか別にそういう特別なものに、えー、当てはまって、えー、自分の宗教を持ってるわけじゃないことです。ちょっとは宗教なしってことになるってことです。いいですか、それで。はい、<笑>じゃあ、次です。<笑>えっと、ちょっと,とてもユニークな髪型をなさってるんですけれども、えっと、どういうふうにすると、そういうふうになっちゃうんですか。<笑> She says, I have a very unique hairstyle. How do you do your hair like that? <laughs>、um, well, my needs are like that. No, well, it's just, you know, just done with a lot of、uh, chemicals and the back combing. Like, I mean, anyone could do it, I think. まあ、いろんなケミカルとか使ったり、えー、高げを正したりするとどなたでもこういう頭をすることはできます。<laughs> いいですかぜひやってください。じゃあ次の質問。はい。あの、さあ、どういう点で、あの、じゃあ、いいですか。あの、まあ、でも、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、でも最高だと思ってる。そうですね。好きですか。じゃあ次の質問。ああ、いいじゃない。奥さんをどれくらいしてますか。<笑>はい、<笑> How much do you love your wife? Um, <笑> well, I. <笑> I love her very much, you know. It's, I, think it, I think it's really,、um, it's very,、uh, I'm very fortunate to, to have someone that, you know, that I, can, I can get on with that, that well.、Uh, and, you know, I know a lot of people who spend their whole lifetime looking at someone. So,、um, uh, you know, I, I, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> で僕が大変、えー、ラッキーであることはいろんな人たちは一生をかけて、えー、そんな一緒にずっと人生を過ごせる人を探すんだけど、えー、こんなに早くそんだけいい人を見つけたってことは自分はとてもラッキーだと思ってます、はい、じゃあ次の質問日本の古い文化に興味があるって言ったんですけど、まず先にどこを見たいですか。あの、you said that you have、um, interest in like Japanese ancient things. Where would you like to go and see first?、Um, well, I, I'd, I'd like to.、Um, well, see, I don't, I don't know a great deal about Japan, but I, I think I'd like to visit Kyoto and, and see some of the, you know, the, the ancient temples there.、Um, but I also, I'm, I, You know, I'm, I'm also interested in the, in, the, in the modern side of Japan as well, so I'm going to look around at Tokyo as much as I can. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, well, well、uh, her name's Jan, and,、um, and she usually accompanies me in most places that I go because she's a very 
sort of down to earth type of person, and she's very practical. Whereas I'm sort of a bit of a you know a dreamer, and and, uh, and so I just like to get on with, with my music, and she you know, organizes all the all the day to day practical stuff and keeps me in order. はい、え、彼女はとてもえ、なんていうかな。気持ち的にもすごい冷静な方だから、僕はどっちかっていうとドリーマーだから、ま、ドリームってとこっち、自分の音楽でま、フラフラ行くから、彼女がいてくれるお
first, the, the first one is uh, the, the first song I played. Um, it's hide and seek in, in English, and it's Kagurembo in, in English. <laughs>
Uh, this is one. This one you probably know as well. This is a. This is a crazy title for a song. But it's called New Song. <laughs> Thank you. 